So for this problem, we, we want to work out part A is natural frequency and damping, damp natural frequency in radians per second and hertz. And so part A, we know that omega naught is the square root of K divided by M. So that's the square root of, what have we got, 10, 000, uh, 1,010 kilograms. So 1,010 kilograms, okay. Do this, that's the square root of 100, which is going to be 10 radians per second, okay. So in, in hertz, F naught, that's going to be omega naught divided by 2 pi, so 10 divided by 2 pi, and if I do the sums for that, okay, so 10, 2, which pi? 1.59, okay. Okay, and omega d, and there's omega naught, 1 minus zeta squared, okay, but we need to find zeta. So let's move that down a bit. And we'll find zeta in here. Zeta is C divided by 2 root km or mk. So we've got uh, what we've got 20 If we do the sums for that, so we've got 20. 2, we've got 10, 1,000, multiply, think. Oh yeah, that's right, so 100, yeah, 10,000 square root, yeah, okay, so let's drop that. Okay, divide by, so we've got 0 0.01. That's a damping ratio. And so if I've got uh, 10, and then we've got the square root 1, and then point 0.1 squared, subtract that, square root that, multiply by 10, 9.94, well, 9.5. Okay? So there's, the, and then obviously F, FD is going to be 2 pi, divided by omega d, and so if we've got oops, that 2 pi, where's pi gone here, 1.58. Okay, so those are the solutions to part 1, part A. Okay, we've got that. So part B says that we need to find um, the uh, equation of motion x of t, okay, um, assuming that the uh, mass is set in motion by giving it an initial velocity, okay. So the, the unwritten thing there is that the initial displacement when it's set in motion is zero, okay. So we know some initial conditions. So we know that x of zero, which can also be written as x of zero, equals zero, okay. And we know that the initial velocity, so x dot of zero, which can also be written as x dot zero, is going to be two meters per second. Okay. So those are the things we know. Okay. The other thing, well, so we basically we need to find this, this equation. Okay, this one up here. For this system. Okay. There's two things in that equation that we don't know. Okay. That's the a. Oops. A and alpha. Okay. Now those are arbitrary constants when you when you derive the equation, okay? And they are determined from the initial conditions. And so let's apply the initial conditions. So if I take my equation of motion x of t, I'm just going to rewrite what I've got up there so we can refer to it. Uh, okay, there's my equation of motion. Now, if I apply the initial condition of t equals zero, so the x is also zero, I've got a, 
What e to the zero? Sorry? One. One. So that disappears. And then I've got cosine. Well, omega dt, well, that's also zero, so I've just got cosine alpha. Okay? Now, my initial condition is that that equals zero. Okay? Now, the only way for that to equal zero is if a is zero or if cosine of alpha is zero. Can a be zero? a is the amplitude. Okay? If it's zero amplitude, then it's not oscillating. That's not true. So a can't be zero, so cosine of alpha must be zero. What value of alpha does cosine have to take for it to be zero? Well, you could do the on your calculator, cosine in, um, inverse of cosine, and that comes out to be pi by 2. So alpha is pi by 2. Okay. So that's one of, the, one of the initial conditions that solve one of the unknowns, okay? We need, now need to use the other initial condition to solve the other unknown. Okay, now to do that, we need to find the derivative of the, this equation, okay? So I'm going to do that. X dot of, of time, okay? A is a constant, so that could just sit outside, okay? And then we've got to use the product rule inside that, those brackets, okay? So I'm going to derive, take the derivative of the exponential first, so that's minus zeta omega naught, e to the minus zeta omega naught t, and then I've got my cosine in here, okay? And then the product rule means that I also have to take the, the exponential again, and then I've got a minus omega d sine of omega dt plus alpha. Okay? So do you remember that as the product rule? So if I a, then we've got uh, e to the minus theta omega naught t, and then we've got minus theta omega naught cosine Okay, do you remember um, that, uh, I'll just write it down here, y of x, if that's the function of two, fun of, of the product of two functions, okay, then y prime of x, the derivative, is going to be f of x prime times by g of x, okay, plus g of x prime times by f of x. Remember that? Product rule? So that's how I got there. We'll cover that on uh, Friday. Okay, so um, so so obviously x dot of zero, okay. This becomes amazingly much simpler. So a we've got we've got there, okay. Well, that's what we're trying to work out. E to the zero is one, okay. Cosine, obviously this this bit here. That's cosine of alpha. What's cosine of alpha? It's up there. Zero. Okay. So if I if I write it out in full, let's just do that. Okay, there's x dot of zero. Well that we know is zero. Okay. What's sine of pi by two? Okay. Pi by two. Okay. Let me take the inverse sign. Mm. Oh, I'm in degree. Uh, no. Why does it give me? Oh, sorry. Sign. Sign. Yeah. Obviously, I was trying to do the inverse sign. Sign of pi by two is one. Okay. So that. Disappears there, okay. That's just one, and so I end up with this being equal to minus a omega d. And so x, and, and we know that this is going to be x dot of zero. So a is going to be x dot of zero divided by minus omega d. Okay, and so we, this is going to be two divided by minus. Was it nine point nine five nine point 
0.95. Okay, which comes out to be do the sum again. So um, mega d was 10, 1.1 squared minus square root times. Okay, there's a mega d, and we've got 2. Swap them over, divide by minus. So minus point zero, no, sorry, 0 0.201 minus. So, oops. <coughs> Smooth that over. Oops. Okay. So there's our A and uh, so our equation of motion x of t is minus 0 0.201 e to the minus t because 0.1 times 10 is t is 1. Okay. Cosine of 9.95 t plus pi by 2. Okay. So there's our equation of motion x of t. That's what we had to find. Okay. So that's ba the basic principle. So you take the equation that you know, and then using your initial conditions, you find your unknowns. Okay, and like I said, to do that, you've got to find the equation for displacement, which you've got, and there's an equation for um, velocity, which you have to find yourself. Okay, and then you apply those initial conditions and output the two unknowns.